welcome to episode 26 of the Alex Steele Show. I'm really, really excited because right now in the fire, we have a striking anvil, 40 pounds of steel in there. It is a six, 60 millimeter thick plate. You can hear my voice is already gone. 60 millimeter thick plate and it weighs about 40 pounds or so. It's heating up, it's super hot. It's gonna be a great deal of fun. Nick is here, say hello Nick. He's here for a class, he's come here from Canada. We've just done day four of his class. Been a huge amount of fun and we thought we would do some striking anvils for this live show and the reason is, is that ah, we have nine of these pre-cut, ready to go, ready to ship worldwide. And I think it'd be great if you got, went and got yourself one. They're on the website now, but I'm gonna show you how to make one if you happen to have a piece of steel and drill, capable of drilling through it. We have a three quarter inch round hole in the piece right now, 60 mil thick, about two and a half inches thick. It's mild steel, and I'm gonna see if I can let my voice survive through this episode. So basically the idea is I have a drift. This happens to be a 4340 drift, and we have just the one drift. We're gonna be cooling it every time. We've already, while it was red, a couple of hits with a hand hammer just to get it set square. So when it goes in there, there's an indexing, so I know that it's gonna be square. And I'm gonna start it off pretty gently with the hand hammer, make sure we're going down straight. Then I'll move up to light sledgehammer blows. You're gonna see that a key thing here is knowing when to stop, flip the billet over, cool the drift off, and go into the other side. A critical thing to avoid is just beating and beating and beating and beating. Because as soon as this drift takes the heat around, out of the immediate surroundings of the hole, it means that the plate isn't gonna, you're not gonna drift open the hole, you're just gonna start bowing the plate. It's very difficult to straighten that if all you have is your, 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 your striking anvil and a sledgehammer. Uh, a couple things to bear in mind, I've only ever done one of these. So I'm living in the world of theory to a very large degree, so we'll see how it goes. My guess is three heats should have it done. We might get it done sooner, we might not. That forge is cranking and I think we're actually melting the steel. I think, yeah, we have sparks coming out of the forge. Should we take a heat? Yeah. Great, so we're gonna pull it out there and start going. She's sparking. Okay, let me, let me open that. You get a little slide out. There we go. Yep, we burnt steel. Great. And then if you flip it upside down, I'm actually gonna put a glove on. And I, I, I tell you what, black t-shirt, how smart was that? Where did I put my drift? How smart was the black t-shirt? I, I don't think very. And I'm gonna take a, take a sledge. I got my marks, so I'm kind of indexed as to where I'm gonna be going. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna have a look at it. Make sure I'm square. I am. Critical thing here, ladies and gents. Make sure that you're watching that black ring around the hole. You don't want it to develop. Okay, she's moving nice and nicely. Give it a few with a heavier sledge. And right now, I'm gonna help my, I'm gonna help Nick. Oh, you got it? There we go, he's a lot stronger than me. And I'm gonna pop that drift out of there. Drift is orange right now. What you can do is just lift it up ever so slightly so that we haven't got it all in contact with the anvil. Drift is orange. I'm gonna give it a little quick, fast, cool, take some of the heat out of it. Bring back down, like I said, this is 4340. We're about to temper it again anyway, as soon as it goes into this other side. Okay, it's a little bit cooler. You guys see it nice and close now? Uh, yeah, just I'll zoom in a little bit. We're halfway through the heat. And look at that, we are three quarters of the way finished. I said this would take three heats. <laughs> we'll get it done in one, no sweat. 
Easy peasy. Well, okay, this is a little bit of a silly way to try and sell pre-cut striking anvils. You do it in one you heat. You do it in one heat. Somebody punch me in the face, so it looks like I'm having a lot more difficulty doing this. Really? Yeah. Oh, bollocks. I mean, whoops. Okay, let's flip her over. Great work. And welcome to the shortest episode of the Alex Theatre. <laughs>
Nah, we're all good. I think that's sorted. <laughs> oh, Sam, is the audio coming through? Sam? Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, we're good. Sorry? Hello, hello, hello. Great. Woo! Well, sorry about that, guys. My receiver ran out, transmitter ran out of battery. I don't know how much of that you missed. It might have just been miming. Should have had a black and white striped shirt, a beret, a little more. Alec Marceau. <laughs> Alec Marceau. Uh, like, like Marcel Marceau. Marcel Marceau. Yeah. Funny thought there. Golly, that was a struggle. Can you hear me now, Sam? <laughs> oh, goodness. Great. Sorry about that, guys. And I have two lapel mics strapped to me. Smart stuff, eh? How are we doing? <laughs> We're probably hot now, right? Yeah, it's pretty good. Great. So, I don't know how much of that you missed. You probably missed it all. If you're still hanging on here, and that's one in the pocket. Well, it's good to have you. I should probably do another introduction to the show, like 30 minutes in. It's great to have you here. We're going to be making a striking anvil. We've already taken a heat on it, which you saw in true French. What's the guy's name? Uh, Marcel Marceau. Marcel Marceau style. We mined the process of forging a striking anvil. Uh, and it went very well for the first heat. Little.
<laughs> oh, now it's on again. Hello, hello, hello. This was off. Well, it's not again. Okay, we're starting again for the sixth time. You know, like, it, it becomes difficult at this point to, to be as energetic about it. Sam, I think the new policy needs to be that to save my mess-ups and destroying the show, I think we need to have you having that headphones on the whole time to listen. I'm sorry, but I think, I think, I think, I think to I save me... I think I did, but it took me a little while to register because I'm oh. really <laughs> <laughs> Okay, for the 10 hundredth time, you're not going to be able to hear it. They're not going to be able to hear me. For the 10 hundredth time, hello and welcome to the Alex Steele Show. Today is episode number 26. It's great to have you here in the workshop. We're here with Nick, who's here from Canada for his four-day class, and it's been fantastic. It's been a massive amount of, a massive amount of, a massive amount of fun. Yep. So the reason we're doing this show today is because I have nine of these pre-cut striking anvils ready to go. They have been these, well, they've been, what are they, like flame cut on the profile. And I've got to say, it's an incredible job that they do flame cutting that profile. And then we then send them off to a water jet cutter to go to number two. Then we send them off to a water jet cutter to get a really nice, really nice square hole in there. Thank you very much, Nick, for your wonderful demonstration. So, we have these, and they're pre-done, they're ready to go. All you've got to do is throw them on a stand, put a little radius on the edges, you know, a little bit of sandpaper in the hardy hole. Exactly, and there's a video on my YouTube channel that show that explains pretty much, like, okay, the, how the stand all works, the angles you want, the type of tube you want, the height that you want, etc., etc., etc. So you can go have a look at that video, and you can go get yourself a strike and have a plate. So for the eighth time, what we're going to do is we're going to take a hot piece of steel out of the fire. Nick very kindly is going to be helping me lift it and helping me do the manipulations. It's great to do two, the, do it with two people. Key things to remember: you don't want to force it. Really, don't want to force it. You want to be taking your time. You want to make sure that you stop driving as soon as it's too cold around the outside of the drift because then what's going to happen is if you're wailing away while well, that drift is stopped moving because the material directly uh, adjacent to ooh, chipped over my wire because the material adjacent to it is cold then what's going to happen is that force has to go somewhere and it starts bowing the plate up and if you don't have a power hammer or a press trying to straighten out a piece of 60 millimeter two and a half inch plate by hand not the easiest task in the world, if I may say so myself. So what you want to do is take your time, go from side to side, and before you take your first high, high heat, you want to index it by taking your drift, taking a hand hammer, just take your time, get it set to where it's perfectly square, or as square as you can get it. Start driving it in there, and, uh, and, and start driving your drift. Joey asked, are you putting another hole in the other side? Are we putting another hole in the other side? Because we'd have to punch it first, and <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to punch it. We drilled the hole first. We drilled a three quarter inch hole, a 20 millimeter hole. That's how we started. And we got ourselves a, a drift right down here, which has been doing a marvelous job. And this is a, just a one inch square drift. Fits through there nice and nice and nicely. And uh, this is made out of EM24 steel. You can use mild steel drifts. You might want to make two in case one kind of gets a little more messed up. And if you use mild steel drift, make sure that you're keeping it cool a hell of a lot more cautiously than, uh, than otherwise that would be important. So, I'm gonna lay that there, and I guess we're gonna take uh, our first heat of the show. Our first, first. our first audio included heat of the show. Uh, let me go ahead and grab some gloves, because as I mentioned beforehand, when we went quiet, <laughs> it's a little toasty. A question that is asked three times, would you ever make a sword? I'd like to one day, absolutely. But I can hardly make a knife now, or at least hardly make a knife that's could be extended upon into sword length without being about like a banana. Just <laughs> God, I, I don't imagine. <laughs> well, there went five months of work. Poke a hole in your quench tank because it just warps <laughs> and sticks out the side. Great. Should we take a heat? We've got about an orange heat. We're almost all the way through with the drift, so this is going to be some easy, easy work. Great. I'm going to grab a pair of tongs, help you lift it out of there. And. Uh, and we'll get to it. Two, three. Ah. Ugly, ugly. Set those right here. Now I've got to be cautious about cables again, because there's a 40 pound block of steel right there. I'm going to drop the drift in, and you're going to see how many blows are we getting? Uh, I'll say six. I'm going to end up slowing down a little bit, probably. I'm 
I'm gonna slow down now. I don't wanna, don't wanna hammer it all the way home and end up hitting the plate. I touched the plate. I touched the plate, I didn't quite hit the plate. Um, so now we're gonna flip it over. Bear in mind your drift is gonna be really hot. Show right there. <laughs> no. Hey, ta -da, we're, Ta -da, done. we're done. <laughs> Welcome to the five minute Alex Steele from Alex Steele show. No, so I'm gonna cool my drift and I'm gonna go back in from the other side. Um sorry? Oh yes, absolutely, because we were we were completely muted then. You notice how when I'm cooling my drift, he's lifting it up off the mm. anvil. Not so critical now because like a toddler could push that through the hole. But especially when you're kind of really trying to get it in there. You want to make sure that the heat's in there. <laughs> you want to try and push it through the hole. <laughs> Sam, yeah, thanks. that's very funny. Goodness, we shouldn't allow toddlers in here. Really? But then who would do the audio the rest of the I time? know, exactly. Who would, who would be there to... Ah, <laughs> oh, tongs. So yeah, was... keep your heat in the uh, anvil you want to punch and not the one that you don't want to punch. Exactly. We were figuring when we first pulled that out of there, it was smoking hot. You know, if we had another another one hot, we could have just laid them right on top of each other, a couple blows, they'd have been welded together, you'd have an 80 pound striking anvil. That would be pretty sick. Yeah. Uh, did we flip it over? Yeah, and we knocked it out. We already did it once. We already, have we already flipped it over once or twice? Yeah, once. Let's flip it over again. Thank you. Lovely. Pop it in the hole again. Naturally, you know, the steel is going to shrink. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get it there, and then we're going to wait a little bit. And I'm quite happy to just leave it on there. What happens if you let go? There we go. That's fine. Then we can just chill out a little bit. What's happening on YouTube, Sam? What kind of comments? I was just asking you to make things like axes, which you have. Yeah. Damascus. We've made axes. I've made Damascus axes. But I should do a YouTube video of a Damascus axe. That'd be good. That'd be very good. That'd be a lot of fun. What, what we made today? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. I, I, a couple of people have asked me to make a Damascus Japanese hammer for a YouTube video. That seems kind of a weird thing to make. I don't know if I'll ever make one. Oh. A couple of people have asked me to make a Damascus Japanese hammer. Which is kind of weird. I don't know why you'd make a Damascus Japanese hammer. Maybe that'll happen one day, we don't know. One day. What do you reckon? I don't know, I think odds are slim. Odds are slim. Odds are slim. Who knows? Maybe one day you'll see uh, you'll see us make a a, a, a a Japanese Damascus thing with an explosion on the side that looks kind of epic. That's not you know somewhere behind you. No. What's the rationale for he hitting the drift through one side and then back through the other side? What is the rationale between hitting the drift through from one side and then through the other side? Um, uh, what would be a, a very easy way to describe this? Well, it, it's basically because you go down from one side, <laughs> if you just keep forcing it when you're opening this hole up, it just doesn't work. You, you can't. You're going to end up putting a bow in it. So you fix that bow by going from the other side. It's, it's like, you know, there's nothing's going to really happen evenly when you're driving a taper into a hole, into a round hole. Like nothing, to, you, you want even stuff to happen, you know? You want to keep things a little more symmetrical, I guess. So you go in from both sides to create an average of straightness, I guess. Seems kind of reasonable. And then even once it's through, you just make sure that you keep on doing the same thing to keep yourself consistent. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, really, like the question did actually think in my mind there for a second, at this stage, is there much of an issue in just staying on one side? Probably not, yeah. especially for the purposes of this it's a hole and you make the tools to fit the hole, you know, like you don't have tools ready for, for the striking anvil like that. I mean, unless you're really lucky. But. Unless you happen to come take a class with you for a strike. Exactly, exactly, and then you make, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you don't happen to have an anvil with the size hardy hole that you do all your tools yeah, for. Yeah, exactly. I've got one bigger and one smaller. Exactly, so you're gonna be making yourself a striking anvil. Yeah, it's basically the first thing I'm doing. Would you say that was easier than you thought? Wildly. That is not difficult to make your own striking no. anvil. Um, but you know what's even easier? Heading to alexsteelblacksmith.com and hitting striking anvils and buying yourself a striking anvil from us. Because we got nine ready to go and ready to ship. You can have it in a few days as soon as we dispatch it. No, 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 no.
Yeah. yeah, nine including that one. Quite frankly. And if you want this one, first come, first serve, you can have the striking anvil that I drifted, that Nick and I drifted and Sam videotaped. videotaped. It was just video, right? No audio, okay, yeah. got it. Sam, that Sam videotaped. Our audio guy was out. Someone you know. asked what part of Kunuki Sari from Kunuki Sari. Ottawa. E. E. <laughs> <laughs> By way of a whole bunch of other places. Right, let's knock this thing out of there. See the shrinking of the anvil itself has toughened its exit. Look at all the scale breaking off of that. It's pretty impressive. So it looks like you got a wire brush ready for that. Very nice. And whether it's entirely necessary or not, for the effort expended, and at least the illusion of making us think that we're helping. You know what I reckon we should do? I think we should flip it over. <laughs> that trip was uh, just a little hot. Oh, you say? <laughs> so the actual process of drifting the anvil is pretty quick, but as it cools down, you want to make sure it's not going to shrink up on you too much. So I'm going to get the drift in there and wait a little bit and talk some more, talk shop. Try and make up for like that whole 20 minutes where... We will... <laughs> what are the um, lads doing the Evo course? What's the bar one? What's the bias striking anvil? Who wants to pick it up when he comes? Just tell him to buy it and we'll give him the money back when he comes for the postage. Yeah, if you, if you want to pick up a striking anvil, you're more than welcome to just buy it. I'll refund the shipping if you let us know that you do not want it shipped and you want to come pick it up. And then just coordinate with me for when you want to pick it up. He's coming to the Evo course. Great. Fun stuff. If it wasn't for the weight of it, I would take one. It's not that heavy. Come on now. We can always ship one to you if you just yeah. buy it. You saw how cheap it is. It's like 100 Canadian, eh? I know, 70 Canadian. I know, eh? But now that I've seen you do one, I'm kind of going, I wonder if I can do it. Yeah, go, it's, it, find a piece of steel and do it, absolutely. Yeah. Trouble is finding the piece of steel. Steel, yeah. Um, I mean, when I made that first one, I had to buy the piece of steel for it. Yeah. And just buying the piece of steel without a hole in it cost as much as the striking anvils that we're selling with a hole in it. You know, and like the effort of trying to find somebody with a drill press big enough, and then somebody with a swage block because, you know, didn't have an anvil to do it over and stuff like that. Yeah. And I had to make drifts for it. And oh look, you don't have inch square stock. And all you have is, uh, is round stock. Well, there's a lot of hand hammering there in front of you. <laughs> I can assure you. Yeah, um, the process of you making the drift for that with the like massive filthy to power amp. Yeah, it took, it took a while in itself. While. Just because I'm trying to be precise, you know? Right. <laughs> trying to keep I it all just, relatively just square. Like moving that with a sledgehammer and going, that would have sucked. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, you know, in terms of like practicality, yeah. when you buy one, it's on a two day, three day shipment, kind of anywhere in the world. Uh, yeah, I think that's, I think it's kind of that. I think it's kind of that, but that's, that's just me. Wells keeps asking, will you ever make a Farrier's Damascus Hammer? Will I ever make a Farrier's Damascus Hammer? Sam, I don't know, have I ever made one? Yes. I have. We have <laughs> really? made a Farrier's Damascus Hammer. Yeah. Sam has one. 20 yards from here, in the back of the What are you talking about? It's like 10 feet from you. <laughs> yeah, 20 so, yards. So, so Sam does have a Damascus Drive. nailing on hammer, driving hammer. Um, which is pretty cool, with that weird, funky, soft tungsten explosion. Pin. Oh yeah, and all the marks from where he hits tungsten pins. Thanks, Sam. Alec makes a beautiful piece of art. Sam proceeds to destroy it. Yep, it's absolutely. A <laughs> you want to brush it off? I think we might as well. Easy little brush. Damascus wheels, someone's truck. 
<laughs> now I need to do that. Damascus rims. Damascus yo. rims. That is proper gangster. I can't brush that off. No, it's... I think that's the case for a chipping hammer. Mm. Where do we leave there. that one? Where you go? Ah, it's over here. Over there, over there. Oh, oh. Cord. Watch your cordy. You got the safety specs on? Ah! Look at that scam fly! Pew, pew. Feel all the ricochets. Like, like being at war. Good lord. Yeah, that's a lot of scale. Ah! <laughs> got me in the neck. <laughs> You can tell Sam keeps a very organized truck. He's been out there looking for his hammer. Ow! <laughs> oh. Thank God my nose was there, otherwise it would have got my other eye. Right, let's, let's flip it back over. Let's put the drift in the other side. Let's go into that way. Right. Oh, great, Sam. I'm really pleased to see that you've got rust on the hammer that we made you. <laughs> that, that's great. So this is the Damascus hammer that Sam has. Um, fresh with its nice coat of rust, which is very important. I think it's pretty cool. Can that camera pick it up pretty well? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm making sure to heat treat it a little bit. There's one. That's the, that's the funky side. That's a little better. So that's a pretty cool little tool. How does it work functionally, Sam? Is it all right? Perfect. Of course. We finish it together. Good. Can you catch it if I launch it like this? Wait. I'm going to launch it a little more safely. Ah! Oh, God. Hammer to the knee. Fantastic. Safety. Crucial. On the oh, concrete. safety first. 100%. Absolutely. Like when I tried to grab onto this with plastic gloves. Over. I mean, we shouldn't actually be saying that publicly. I really should have been like, hey, don't use those gloves around here. They don't. Whoa! The, the trouble is, is like they make these type of gloves to look like leather really well. Yeah. So I was a little deceived, but. Yeah, and I mean. Leather I doesn't tend to melt, though. No, not really. Yeah, I only intended ever to use it for while swinging a sledgehammer. They work very well for swinging a sledgehammer, though. You yeah, know? they do. The and then I, that's what I thought I was going to be doing. And they're like, nah, well, we'll get you to do that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll just grab. <laughs> well, put it this way. At least you were able to take Thank the you. gloves off your hand without them being melted to your hand. Yeah, I was pretty glad I got those off there fast enough. <sighs> yeah, plastic in the workshop. Not a good idea. Yeah, really. All right. Let's see if we can set it in there. So remember, if you want this particular striking handle, let us know. First come, first serve. Uh oh. Is this one? Hang on. This one. Uh oh. This one that my patch is on. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta take it off. So I told you to leave the handle on my straight through. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm gonna get my touch mark. Uh oh. Da da da. I don't think we've encouraged many people that buying a striking apple is a good thing, but I think it is. Yeah. I mean, without some rather specialized equipment, it'd be quite the task. Uh-oh, I lost the touch mark. I must have put it back, I tell you what. Here it is. Can you turn it up on the spot? Yep. <laughs> that's, that's very funny, actually. Most of the time, my it's tools not. are exactly where they should be. But I haven't, I, 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 I've learned the, I, I assume, I'm very unorganized. Beautiful. Watch your eyes. And there we go. A little bit of touch marking. Awesome. Fantastic. What are people saying, Sam? Oh, I don't want to adorn your forge. Um, how would you have to attend one of your classes? 
I can't remember what my, my particular thing is. Uh, basically, it's, it, it's more of a case-by-case -case basis because, you know, for example, there are a lot of 14-year-olds that, like, it's a very subjective kind of thing in terms of like, hey, you have gone around the sun exactly 14 times, therefore you're mature enough and, 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 and in, in good enough physical shape to be able to come and take a class. Like, I can't say, yes, you need to go around the sun 14 times exactly to be able to go around, to be able to come and take a class. But I think as a general thing, if you're under the age of 14, give it a little bit. There's a lot of sledgehammer swinging kind of going on. Uh, you know, wait until that time where you know you start getting a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger and stuff like that. Probably be a little more suited to it, especially because you're working with other people. It wouldn't be a bad idea if you have a parent that is interested in forging and is wanting to learn too, for them to come and take the class too. You'll definitely need parent parental supervision. I'm going to say up until kind of you know age 16, just as a just as a, a little bit of a safety thing. You know, if you're 16, you can come take a class by yourself. Absolutely. Um, but uh, if you're 60, wait, how does it work? I've forgotten. But yeah, the, the, the policy that I have for the classes with the accommodation is that like, you know, if you're under the age of 18, you need to contact me before we book a class because we need to book you a separate room. Because otherwise, you know, it, it just seems a little odd, you know, having adults uh, in the same, same twin room as a stranger who is, who is a minor doesn't quite seem right. So, you know, you'll get, a, you'll get another room. We'll sort that out too. But yeah, you know, if you're, if you're 14, you're in good physical shape and you're very committed to learning about the craft of blacksmithing, absolutely come take an Evo class. Uh, you'll need parental supervision. You know, if you're 16, come take a class, but you'll need to get your own room. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's always a blast. It's always fun. It's always fun. Wow, I think that hole looks pretty good. Yeah. Should we see if it drops through again? Interesting to see how the, how the thing shrinks, you know, how that, how that works where there's a particular moment where it really, really does stop shrinking, and whether it's a relatively constant thing. <whistles> give, it the old, uh, give it the old Canadian wiggle. Great. Well, any more questions for me to answer? What do you use this animal for primarily? Apart from striking on. Striking on. And also I use my hot cut there have my hot cut there because that way it's off of my normal anvil, a little safer. That uh, means I can also use the holes on my normal anvil. And it means that the hot cut is a little lower because the hot cut sticks up and out and you're often cutting material that's a little bit thicker. It brings it up to a level that's a lot more comfortable to cut at as opposed to having it way up here where you're bunching up your shoulders. It makes it a little more difficult. So really, if I'm working by myself, I've got a hot cut in the striking anvil the whole time. Uh, and then obviously working with a striker, essential. The reason that we have a striking anvil as opposed to uh, a normal anvil when we're working at a striker, because this way we can have an anvil that's mounted low down. Uh, it doesn't matter if you miss hit on this anvil, you're not gonna take a chip out and send it into somebody's femoral artery um, and then play the game of saying goodbye as fast as you can, um, which is a good thing. This will just dent, which is what you want. You want it to dent if you have a miss hit on this particular anvil. That's very good because a sledgehammer has a lot of kinetic energy and uh, that can... Especially 26 pound. Especially the 26 pound sledge, absolutely. Ow. Someone keeps asking about making touch marks, but I guess you can't make a touch mark. Show someone how to make a touch mark apart from yours. It's a tough one. There are a couple of different techniques people have for making a touch mark themselves, you know, forging it. I think they're all pretty bad. Unless you can file it and dremel it to shape, pay somebody a hundred bucks to make it for you. There are plenty of companies out there that specialize in making marking tools that will last, that are heat treated professionally, that are gonna be able to withstand to striking cold steel, stuff like that. Go to one of them, pay them a hundred bucks. Come on. Then you'll have a touch mark that'll last you for years and years and years. You can design it exactly how you want. You could pay a graphic designer to design it exactly how you want it. I'd really recommend that you do that. If it's a simple kind of thing, you can forge a punch and file it. That's how I did mine. Filed it. Ground it, done. It's an S. It's super easy. Two chain for, chains for file marks did it just fine. Yep. Uh, aside from that, any more questions, Sam? What kind of steel would come with that? Mild steel. What kind of anvil do you have? All sorts. How heavy is your anvil? That's about 40 pounds. <laughs> that one's about 700. What's the best kind of anvil to have? Best kind of anvil is the one that you have. When you do it, can I get a hammer? No. <laughs> Too many hammers to make. Can you do a woman's only class? Can we do a woman's only class? 
Well, I think there are a total of about, like, four women that watch this show, so if they all, if they all take a class, then, like, if the, if the women, if the women have this kind of, you know, what would be the word, uh, psychic, or, you yeah, know, when you can, telepathic, kind of telepathic kind of communication skills amongst each other all the way around the world, like, hey, let's all take a class at the same time. Well, the, the, really, no, I mean, women will do just fine on the class, uh, just, you know, bear in mind, you know, a certain amount of kind of physical, physical strength you're going to need to kind of get it done, you know, you need to be confident of getting the sledge in the air. If you can do that, you're going to do just fine. You don't need to have a woman's only class, for God's sake. If you were a pie, what pie would you be? Uh, if I were a pie, what pie would I be? <sighs> Apple and blueberry. Fair enough. Or blackcurrant. I think I got blueberry. I think that seems pretty good. Yeah. Overdue Atom said... I'm really loud. Now you need to shout so they can hear you. No, I'm really loud even now. Oh. Can you buy a hammer? Huh? A what? A hammer. A hammer. Sadly not. I really am pleased that this conversation topic came up. First thing to say is thank you to all of you that bought a hammer today. That was crazy. That was the most exciting moment for me was launching that video and then bling. Bling, 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 you bling, 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 him. bling. It was we, we don't need to go into detail of how excited <laughs> I was. But I, and it has nothing, my, my voice right now has nothing to do with that particular um, celebration or lack of celebration. At all. Okay, I'm gonna just gonna move in front here. <laughs> has nothing to do with that at all. It was all very calm, really. I very much expected to sell um, 32 hammers in five minutes. It's a lie. I mean, that's an absolute shock. Uh, absolutely astounded that I sold a hammer. I, well, it wasn't that I sold a hammer. It, it was that I took an order every 15 seconds. Like, you know, starting a business, things are very, very difficult at first. I remember the months running this business where, like, I pay 180 pounds for the rent on this place. 180 pounds a month. That's incredibly cheap for the location, for the size, for the, you know, the relative freedom that I have here. That is cheap as can be. But I remember very well the times where it's like it's starting to get to the end of the month and I don't know how to find the extra 180 pounds to pay for my rent on this. Now, always on time with the rent, luckily, beg, steal or borrow, neither had to actually happen. You know, <laughs> serendipity comes and you very gratefully get a job of the last week of the month. Helps a lot. Charge me. Well, yeah, exactly. You know, then, you know, one day Sam comes in, you know, charge him to make a hammer, easy peasy. You know, practically stealing money from him, aren't I? Right. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Sam, what was I saying? I don't know. <laughs> Something along the lines of very difficult. I remember the time. Sam, why would you derail me like that? <laughs> why would you derail me like that? <laughs> Money, month to month, 150 pounds, me stealing it off you. No, me stealing it off you. Yeah, we'll make no. no, but like, you know, like, it, it, pretty, pretty tough trying to, trying, to, trying to, you know, organize finances and running your own business. And, uh, and, and yeah, I can tell you that uh, it's impressive just how working hard in the correct direction can really change things very fundamentally. And it's, a, it's a very, very exciting thing to know that, hey, the more I work, the more effort I put, the more effort I put in, the more thought I put into the direction that I'm working, the better things seem to go. I hope that as I go through this journey, people are, kind of, people are watching and saying to themselves, wow, that's cool seeing Alex's business grow, seeing him reach more people, seeing him, you know, make cool tools for more people, uh, make more videos for more people, stuff like that. I hope people are seeing that and saying to themselves, you know what, I want to do that too. Because it's, it's kind of exciting. Um, again, as much as I'd like to downplay how excited I was at one o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern, or 8, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, until 8.05 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It was truly shocking. I mean, it, it, an extreme level of ecstasy comes as the results of your hard work and everything that you, you plan, dream, and hope for 
really come to fruition and it's just tremendously exciting. And I, I wanna thank you guys that have bought Hammonds, that have come and taken classes. Nick, thank you for being here. Everybody that's ever bought an online course, thank you for buying an online course. Thank you for watching the videos because that brings in revenue through the adverts now, which is astonishing. Sorry? What do you wanna do? As a student who's come here to take classes with Alec, the online courses are phenomenal. Watch them, they're great. Okay, I'll, I'll give you your payment a little later for that, thanks. No. I appreciate that, we negotiated that before. No, we totally. didn't. Thank you, Nick, I really do appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, because the, so the, the, all of the Evo, Evo classes and seminars that I do, uh, the online course comes with that, so that you can, you know, you can have a look through it beforehand. If I forget to give it to you, make sure that you contact me so that I can give it to you. But yeah, if you've been watching through the online courses and you've, you've, you've been developing that way, and I mean, I thank you. I, I appreciate that support for me, and I'm pleased that you're able to develop your own blacksmithing that way. Like I said, crazy exciting, building a business, seeing your hard work start to pay off, and, uh, and yeah, that's thanks to you guys watching the videos, supporting, come and taking classes. That's thanks a huge amount to Sam for all the incredible work that he does behind the scenes. You know, I mean, I, I'm just so thrilled. I mean, your audio work, Sam, is just phenomenal. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great way to just destroy a really sincere, sincere thought there. But I'm, no, it's, it's, I'm, I'm very grateful uh, for all the wonderful people that uh, we're able to bring together here and really grateful that more and more people are getting into blacksmithing every single day. I'm getting messages from you fantastic people inundated. I've just started blacksmithing and I'm having a huge amount of fun. That's a real honor to be able to help people get into a really exciting craft and I hope that, you know, if you want to start a business, you really get at it. It's a lot of fun. Remember, if you want to strike an anvil, I'd love to send you a striking anvil. We can get them to you pretty quick, liggity split. We have a nine ready to go. We're just gonna wrap them up in some cardboard tape, throw a sticker on them, send them off your way. Good they can be there pretty close. Go. Are you gonna buy one? We have eight ready to go. Do you want this one? Yeah. Great. Okay, we have eight ready to go. Go to the website, alexdealblacksmith.com under striking anvils. I'd really appreciate it if you got one. And I would also just be thrilled for the pure fact that having a striking anvil, like, my business exists because of that striking anvil. Entirely. Because of taking the knowledge that I learned from Brown Brazil, practicing it on this striking anvil, getting good enough, hopefully, where people wanted to come take classes. I mean, Nick, I mean, you, admittedly, you were lost in Norwich, and then you stumbled past the workshop, and you're like, what does this guy do? Oh, you do classes? Well, I don't know what I'm going to do, so I might as well do a class. I mean, you know, admittedly you stumbled here by accident yeah, I, from I Canada. Yeah, how I ended up here. You know, it was kind of weird. No, but you know, people, people like coming and, and coming from afar to take classes, which is a crazy honor, I tell you that. That striking anvil has built my business. My business exists because of that striking anvil. I've made a whole lot of fun tools on there. I've had an enormous amount of joy with that striking anvil. And I hope that the eight striking anvils that we're ready to ship around the world can give you that similar amount of joy and that similar similar different direction in the craft of blacksmithing because they're a lot of fun to work on they're a great tool they're essential if you want to do any work with a striker sam thank you so much for your help nick thank you for being here it's been an honor my friend having you here for this class everybody that's watched these videos thank you very much thank you for buying hammers today again what an incredible honor five minutes i cannot believe that that is just mind blown mind blown and voice destroyed and I think my knees hurt. And I think I bumped my head when I jumped up and hit the ceiling too. Thank you very much for watching this episode. I hope you have an awesome day. Remember, alexsealblacksmith.com. Go, go, go get yourself a striking animal now. 61 bucks shipped to the USA in two or three days. Have a great one. I look forward to seeing you soon. It's been a pleasure.